Conus here for the PT on Ice Daily Show, and I just got to get Instagram going here. We are, um, I teach our extremity management course as well as our primary care physical therapy course alongside Morgan Denny. Uh, Morgan and I are launching our third cohort coming up this October 5th, so Monday, October 5th, and that course is really just all about, you know, one of our tenants at ICE is being part of the solution to the healthcare crisis in America and really trying to get on the front end of a lot of these diseases and conditions that we see in, in our practices. And so as a physical therapist being more preventative in nature, screening direct access, cost savings, keeping people out of the medical industrialized complex and, and intervening with a fitness forward exercise and, and, and really empowerment uh, based approach alongside with skilled manual therapy. So primary care really fits into that because we believe that the stronger a clinician is in, the, in understanding human disease, understanding complex comorbidities and how those can be managed by a physical therapist, screened by a physical therapist, make good referrals, be a member of the healthcare team that kind of fits into our model. So um, that's primary care. Today's topic for Clinical Tuesday, what I'd like to get into is somewhat related to primary care, somewhat related to extremity management. But this is a condition that I've actually seen a couple of times in the last few years. And I think it's probably not discussed as often in our circles. Uh, so I just wanted to bring the topic up and kind of throw that around. And that is shoulder injury related to vaccine administration. Obviously, we all understand the importance of vaccines. Every year we get the flu shot. We need those antigens to, to prepare our bodies our, the immunity of our bodies to fight off disease. Uh, vaccine has a huge role in eradicating disease, protecting vulnerable populations. So if we, even if we don't do it for ourselves, just like everything we've learned over uh, the course of COVID-19, we're protecting others by, by being vaccinated. And so every year, a lot of us get flu shots. And uh, this year, probably we're gonna see a, a record high, I'm, I'm assuming a record high in the number of flu shots that are administered in the United States. Plus then we've got the COVID-19 vaccine on top of that. So uh, this, this might come into our clinics a little more frequently this year compared to other years. And so one thing that I want to uh, highlight is vaccine administered shoulder pain is typically gonna come on within a few days after the vaccine. And so we've all had the vaccine before, you get the injection into the deltoid. What they really wanna do is get it right in the middle of your deltoid. They should be using a needle, a needle size based on your body weight. So there are different needle sizes based on different needle body weights because if they go too deep and hit the bone, then that's not gonna get absorbed as well and you might not build up a, a immunity as effectively. Same thing if it's too short, it's subcutaneous, it doesn't get into the muscle belly, same issue could apply. So anyway, needle size is important, but what they really need to do and how you know you're getting a vaccine by somebody that knows what they're doing, they should sit down next to you. They say a seated patient should be administered by a seated clinician. They should put their finger on your acromion and then their, 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 their thumb on the acromion and then their finger on your deltoid tubercle and try and hit you right in the middle. Because what they need to do is be at least two to three finger breaths below the acromion. What happens is when you see this shoulder injury in clinical practice, it occurs most commonly because they, they probably hit you too high. And so if they get the patient too high, it actually will irritate the bursa, joint capsule, so you'll get this synovitis effect. And when I've seen it, it's presented very similar to a lot of ways of like a of rotator cuff tendinopathy sort of slash shoulder subacromial pain type condition. Now, uh, both patients responded really well. I think the good thing about this is it's transient. Most people do not have serious complications. They see you for a few visits, you do your thing, you know, you, you, you obviously, you know, pretty basic, simple stuff. If I were to describe the rehab program for both those patients, it was super basic, right? A lot of 
periscapular work, cuff work, low load, high repetition, isotonic work, because I really want to just influence movement and confidence and, and get that shoulder moving. A little bit of manual techniques just to get that shoulder moving kind of nicely. But the other thing that can happen, and I have not seen this, is they can go too far posterior. If they're too far posterior, they actually hit the axillary nerve. And so then you could get, you know, neurological potentially system or symptoms, or if they go too far inferior, think about that deltoid tubercle. If you're below that level, the radial nerve wraps around right there. And so they could hit the radial nerve and potentially uh, give you radial, you know, ner nerve like symptoms because of that. So I'm going to attach in the comments, I'm going to attach a full text article that was published, comes out of Canada. Um, and a really well written article just talks about kind of the epidemiology of it, the fact that it's underreported, talks about the, the proper technique and, um, and then the course of action when a patient does have uh, negative uh, side effects or this sort of iatrogenic injury. Now, the last thing I just want to mention is I tend to not make this connection to the patient. I tend to not say, oh, you, you have this injury because of the vaccine. I tend to not do that. I don't want to scare people and I don't want to create a you know, I don't know for a fact that that's what caused it. I don't want to create a causal assumption. I think that might not be, you know, that's not cool. As, as a member of the healthcare team, we got to give uh, each other the benefit of the doubt, right? And that shoulder pain could have come on from a variety of reasons. But I think in your mind, you're thinking this stuff. And then to the patient, you're explaining to them, you know, sometimes people have a little bit of soreness and a little bit of irritation after a vaccine. It's not a big deal. It's going to go away. Here are some things we can do to help you. You know, you're, you're going to you're going to do well. So obviously everything we do from a language perspective is always with um, confidence, and confidence and empowerment and enablement and make them feel good about, about everything and uh, have a good prognosis. So, all righty. Thanks everybody. Catch us October 5th. If you're interested in primary care course, it's a lot of fun. Eight weeks. Uh, Morgan and I do, we try to get very interactive, interact with everybody on a regular basis. And, uh, really engage. It's an engaging and fun course. So if you're looking for something fun to do over the next eight weeks, please join us for the primary care course. Take care. Hey, thanks for tuning in to the PT on Ice Daily Show. If you enjoyed this content, head on over to iTunes and leave us a review. And be sure to check us out on Facebook and Instagram at the Institute of Clinical Excellence. If you're interested in getting plugged into more ICE content on a weekly basis while earning CEUs from home, check out our virtual ICE online mentorship program at ptonice.com. While you're there, sign up for our Hump Day Hustling newsletter for a free email every Wednesday morning with our top five research articles and social media posts that we think are worth reading. Head over to ptonice.com and scroll to the bottom of the page to sign up.